what's cracking with your snack and snacker stars is brandon from the sas the snack food appreciation society with another edition of otr rabbit 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 it's march 1st 2016 and would you drive 100 miles round trip for a cheeseburger hmm would you well i would because i'm dedicated to my craft and i'll be right back after this to show you what burger it is and more plus a bonus shake after this you are looking live at the Steak and Shake Steak Burgers on Route 17 North in Spotsylvania County, Fredericksburg area of Virginia, right across the street from what used to be a Circle K. They have now changed the name of it, unfortunately. It's now called A+. So strange things are no longer afoot at the Circle K. But strange things are always afoot at the Steak and Shake, including strange and interesting new burgers. And that's why I have driven 49.8 miles at this point to check out their brand new burger. Um, it's been about six months since I've been out here, I believe. And uh, let's go ahead and open this baby up. What we have here is the French Dip Steak Burger. Go ahead and open it up. Bam. So what you have here is a steak burger, a double steak burger to be exact, on a ciabatta bread or bun. And whoops, underneath there you've got grilled onions, although in the promo picture they show a lot more grilled onions than that. And uh, it's got Swiss cheese on it as well. Now you might be saying, that's mighty thin. Are you sure there's two steak burgers on there? Yeah, I am because... That's just the way they do it. They make their burgers out of these little tiny hockey pucks of meat that they smash up on the grill, kind of like Smash Burger, uh, but they've been around longer. And uh, they flatten them out and they put two of them together and the cheese is actually in between the two patties there. Sorry for the shadowy uh, nature of things today. I tried to park everywhere in the parking lot and everywhere was shadowy, so I just gave up and parked where I normally park. All right, this burger with fries which are right over there, and I'm not impressed with their fries, so I will not be messing with that. Comes to $6 after tax, $5.49 prior. And basically, uh, it also comes with au jus, and uh, you might call it os jus or something like that if you're not uh, initiated, but basically that's a uh, cup of meat drippings or a gravy uh, from roast beef usually uh, that you get with the French dip sandwiches which a traditional French dip sandwich is uh, you know a sandwich with uh, roast beef and cheese that has uh, a cup of au jus with it that you would then dip the sandwich in uh, in this case I guess you're supposed to dip the burger in that little cup uh, we'll see how that goes it smells really 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 good though very beefy all right guys I'll be right back to check out this combination and more right after this on OTR all right, gang, I am back to take a look at this brand new steak burger, the French Dip Steak Burger from our friends at Steak and Shake. There you go. Let me go ahead and show it to you next to my noggin the way I always do. Now, one thing you'll always notice that steak burgers from uh, Steak and Shake are not the biggest burgers in the industry, but they are a tasty damn burger no matter what. I mean, I'm expecting this thing to taste really good. One thing I'll note is this ciabatta is really really stiff i don't know if it's meant to be that way or if it's stale i've had stiff ciabatta and i've had ciabatta that's not quite as stiff i guess we'll see how it tastes to really make that determination i'm going to taste it first uh the way it is and then i'll try it with the au jus bon appetit all right guys um a good flavor going on of course because their meat their steak burgers always taste fantastic um the swiss cheese goes very nicely with it and there is a nice taste of the grilled onions underneath although it could use more as advertised anyway uh the one drawback here is on the ciabatta bread it's a very crusty ciabatta bread it's not stale it's just very crusty and uh because it is nice and soft on the inside however uh, it's dry. Man, it's dry. It could really use a condiment of some sort. And I guess that's why they give you a cup of gravy with it, you know what I'm saying? Or meat drippings, or whatever you want to call this. It is what it is. It's more like a gravy than a sauce, but more like a broth than a gravy, in my opinion. And I have a story about that I'll tell you in a minute. Right after I take a bite of this with the au jus on it. 
Make sure I get the bread down in there and the meat. There we go. Got it on a nice corner to make it a little bit easier for dipping purposes. It's dripping and I'm dipping. Let me take a bite. All right, yeah, basically that's where uh, this burger goes. It has to have that au jus or some kind of condiment or you're going to be in trouble because that's a dry, dry burger. And I don't know if you noticed, I didn't get a drink. So I'm going to be suffering here in a minute unless I actually drink the broth. But um, let's go ahead and build this burger from the bottom to the top. Like I was saying, the bun is uh, very, very crusty and dry, not stale. Uh, it has a decent flavor, but honestly, I could have used a little bit less sturdy of a bun for this. I know maybe they're trying to keep it from falling apart with the au jus. But I think they went a little far in the execution on that. Uh, the steak burger, of course, impeccable tasting. Um, very, very meaty, and it's got just that greasy spoon uh, burger quality that I just love from Steak and Shake. Um, the Swiss cheese uh, is creamy and uh, complements it perfectly. Uh, as I said before, I could use a few more grilled onions uh, in this case, but they uh, taste really good interacting with the, um, the juice, the au, the au jus, if you will. And uh, also, uh, beyond that, that's it. The au jus itself has a nice uh, salty, meaty flavor. Uh, you know, like a bouillon almost, but a little bit more substance to it than that. Um, and it really plays well off of the onions, like I was saying before. Uh, so, overall, you know, I cannot give this burger a perfect score, and that's a bummer. But, it's going to get a decent score. It's going to go ahead and get a three-quarters thumbs up. I mean, you know, most uh, Steak and Shake burgers are in that 7 8 to a full thumbs up. But this one's going to get a three-quarters thumbs up with a different bun. I think it would have been a different story, though. And maybe if they had some kind of spread on it, like an aioli or something like that. I think it would have benefited from that for sure. Not going to review their fries because their, their fries are something I've reviewed many times in the past and do not enjoy them. I'm going to get something down the road to actually uh, supplant them or replace them, if you will. Now, in terms of French dip sandwiches, uh, while I have you here, I used to date a Moroccan girl about uh, four or five years back, and we went to that uh, little cafe chain. Was it La Madeleine? I don't know if I'm saying it right, but I, you know what I'm talking about. And the only thing that they really had on their menu that I really wanted to try was a French dip sandwich. Just a regular French dip sandwich on a baguette with um, sliced roast beef. And I believe it was Swiss cheese on there as well. And it came with a nice, you know, ceramic cup of the uh, au jus. So, you know, she sits down. She'd only been in the country here for about, I don't know, six months to a year, I forget. And... She sees that I have this bowl there of, uh, of liquid, and she gets up and gets a spoon. And she goes, here's, this is for your soup. And I was like, uh, no, this isn't soup. You're supposed to dip your sandwich in it. She was completely uh, confounded by that. She didn't quite understand what was going on. But, uh, hey, what can you do? You don't always know everything about snack food unless you join the SAS group on Facebook, which you can do by clicking on the link down below. I'll tell you more about everything else in a little bit. After I check out my second course and my shake. You are looking live at the Sonic Drive-In on the same street, Route 17 here in Spotsylvania County, Virginia. A very hustle and bustle uh, area, as you can see. Lots of cars going by. You got a Wawa across the street there. And this is also in the parking lot of a rather large shopping center with lots of different types of uh, shops. Everything from Target to... Uh, you know, frozen, frozen yogurt and vape shops and things like that. Anyway, uh, I am here at Sonic now to finish up the twofer on the road today. I got a shake that just sounds absolutely fantastic to me. And what that shake basically is, uh, Jamie Kim from Twitter and from the SAS uh, Facebook group, she said that she tried this last week and it was absolutely fantastic. It is the Bourbon Brown Sugar Shake, one of their brand new creamery line of shakes. Sounds like something Heel Will would say. And uh, basically, uh, if you take a look there, I also got myself a large tater tot for the ride home because Sonic Tots are the bomb. And also... The uh, shake was $3.69 for a medium. So not exactly the cheapest shake in town. Tots and shake together, $6.54.
There's my tots over there in case you don't believe me. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and slurp down some of this shake for you and let you know what I really think. All right, guys, I'm back to take a quick slug of this uh, Sonic Shake, the bourbon brown sugar. They got a lot of other flavors also, apparently, like a butterscotch one and some other ones I'd like to uh, investigate, but this is the one that I'm most interested in. You know, I kind of likes me bourbon, so I figured, hey, why not give it a shot? All right, let me just do that. Gang, this is a heavenly shake. Worth every bit of the $3.69. Hell, I almost wish I got a large, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to make them put a large and a medium into a supersized cup and charge them for a large and a medium because they're not animals. But anyway, uh, really, really good. You do taste the brown sugar quite a bit. The bourbon seems to be a more subtle thing. I don't think they want it tasting quite like an alcoholic shake because, you know, it's not. But, um, you know did you get a little bit of idea of the flavor now the whipped cream on top is a nice you know addition to this sort of thing but i do think that it takes away from the actual flavor of these shakes because it blends in there and sort of you know gives it its own slant to the situation so in that aspect i wish it didn't have whipped cream uh there are some kind of cookies or something in there uh i'm not going to fish one out but let me Follow me on Twitter at Brandon Reich SAS. Also on Instagram. Use the uh, hashtag Snack Society on both of those as well as any other social media you might use. That way we know what you're talking about and you know what we're talking about too. Also like, favorite, share, and subscribe. And you should be as cool as me. Drive a 100 miles round trip for a burger and a shake. And in the meantime, in between time, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.